afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome, welcome to another exciting propaganda cast with me, your host, Imperial Dane, Master of Propaganda, Hero of Reich, Defender of the Fatherland. We're off here to an exciting one versus one right here on the road to Karakov between Jesselin and Captain Price here, finding us the Wehrmacht and the US Price here with Airborne Recon and Rifle Company forming up the 7th Infantry Division going up here versus Jesselin fighting for the Reich für Deutschland for the 15th Panzergrenadier Division. They call him Arme. Panzer helps the infantry division, anyways. For him, we got close air support, assault support, and mobile defense. Bulletins are infantry, and we got a lot of Jackson bulletins here for price. Increasing penetration and re decreasing reload times, not increasing them, that would be a bit awkward. Price again repeating his little effort that he made as the Wehrmacht while playing north. Karakov wiring off here. Karakov denies much here to the Germans. You got Grenadiers down the way for Jesselin heading westwards here. Pretty standard stuff. Price heading towards here to secure the fuel there. Obviously, both players in that regard securing the fuel closest to their bases. More wire going up there. No complaints about having to lay down the bar wire that was engineers would in the previous one. Two Grenadiers there so far versus two riflemen. Pioneers advancing up there. Looks like they're not going straight straight over there. Instead, heading towards the right hand side now. Initial part there wired off. We got more rough in the round. We got more grenadiers around as well there for Jesselin. Both players going rather heavy on the infantry. Yeah. A few there being secured. And continued part wiring. Rifling up secure the center. Pioneers securing the territory here. Additional riflemen there. Nothing wildly out of the ordinary so far. We got close air support there chosen for Jesselin. Securing right, points there. Of course, he could also wire around here. I doubt he'll be doing that. Not really that much of reason. Price continues his barbed wire antics. Fourth gonna do there for Jesselin now is going for the infantry heavy build so far. Pioneers bring up the into the rifle. M1 Garand there versus the MP40. We've got Gunners flanking in there, opening up the rifle, the rifle definitely caught in a bit of our position, then falling back here. We all got more rifle in the nearby to support though, so I'm not trying to draw them into that, maybe surprising. Jesselin's troops in that way, causing them some nasty casualties. Wire there continues to be laid down. Fourth rifle unit there on the way for Price. Pioneers are being pushed back here by the riflemen. Gunnadiers heading towards the centre and there you go, first shot's fired in the left. Gunnadiers here versus Rifle, Gunnadiers quickly falling back into the building, Rifle rolling up here. Going to maybe pull back and there you go. It really has a hit then of course in this case now, things will be slightly to the advantage here of Jesselin in a leap because the barbed wire here prevents Price from taking up any serious cover as a point where it's a good action. There we go, Rifle no flanking in from the other side there, catching the gun is a pretty bad position and forcing them away so not all bad here though for Price though he did have the potential of becoming a bit awkward. Almost got the gun the unit there. We got mines going down here, apparently paying telemines already. And what mining off the roads. Good. In fact, Chile and this is a very good spot since there's a little room for vehicle maneuver and actually that way avoided even by accident. Which tends to be sort of the primary way, you know. You know, Dita, I just feel like they avoided something that could have destroyed us all. A shot landing fire, Robin taking advantage of cover. Grenades falling back into the building once more. We got a grenade to attack from the south here, Rafa falling back already there, good reaction from Price, avoiding unnecessary casualties. We turn it on the way for him as well, the Lieutenant. Gonna be listening down here, Rafa holding up, Ooh, trying to take some territory there, good grenade is caught. Rafa pushing in from the north here, just a little bit here on the back foot, but still pushing back, pushing back. Has he teched up? Yes indeed he has. Good idea. Scout car or half tracks. Though technically, most Panzer Grenade Divisions did not actually have any half tracks. They were large reliant on trucks, or in worst cases, of bikes. Or maybe Kubel wagons. It was certainly not uncommon to see in the later stage of the war Panzer Grenade Divisions which had to rely on bicycle mounted Panzer Grenadiers. Our lines of supply are disrupted. 
Fifth Rifleman you there, so we're seeing prices going very heavy on infantry in response to Jesselin's infantry play so far. A bit of an interesting decision. I mean, he could go on for an M20 rather rapidly, I think, there, versus Jesselin, or a 50 cal, I think, could also work out pretty well. And a half, of course, will, would also have been another option there for Price. So I don't know um, if going for that many riflemen and lieutenant uh, there could work out well. I mean, he goes for some BARs maybe on grenades. I mean, he could use this one that he got to play aggressively here versus Gesslin. But I mean, otherwise, he could sort of assault himself in a pretty heavy manpower bleed if Gesslin plays his cards correctly. Of course, he could do the same versus him. But there you go. Two to one on the way there. A light to punch his bear back in. But it is there hitting the ward and trying to get back in one piece. So far, Price is rather dominant in the fight there with his rifleman there with their semi-automatic rifles. Jesslin sort of trying his best to hold on. But getting pressured all over the place. He's trying to sort of focus up his troops without blobbing. Two to one here might help a bit in particular since there's not a lot of veterans as such there on Price's troops, which just mean they won't have any anti-tank grenades for sort of dealing with the two to one. And there we go, like the punches be back and mobilized here for Sreich. Port in there secured, and we've got a medic bunker up here. Will there be any further things from the light to make a nice copy here though from Jesselin? Shots fired down here, Jesselin's in a pretty bad position, there we go. 2-2-1 two, two, moves in, there we go. Johnny Moat down. Can the other fellow make it out of there alive? Lieutenant moving in, not really like he's going to be able to do much there, except, you know, just take up the shots there, but... Beyond that, the options are a bit limited there, there's a 2-2-1. Two, two, just feeding it experience, to be honest. We've got more rocket moving in there, large amounts of infantry, of course. In this case, had he had an M20, he would actually been able to flatten the 2-2-1 two, two, a bit more. We've got recon support, though, so I suppose he might be trying to wait for a Greyhound, which, of course, could do the trick if properly handled. And could certainly also be one method for really punishing Jesselin's infantry heavy play. I mean, a good counter shot here and there could be absolutely devastating to Jesselin. We'll certainly punish him again for going for so heavy on the Gunnerius with very little else. Medic back up there. 2-1 to one falling back for repairs it seems. Gunnerius is the force rifle right from the right flank. Continue pushing him against cover. No, getting stopped here by another counter push here from Jesselin. Advancing here with three gunnery units, rifleman not holding up too well. We've got Lieutenant here trying to support, but not quite there. And there we go, quickly focusing down the rifleman. The tractor turning out to be not that much of a formidable fortification. And he's uh, getting slightly cut down, but overall, prices continue to maintain good map pressure here versus Jesselin. But still has some risks there in sort of attempting to hold. Pack 40 there, Ryan sort of back things up there for Jesselin. Quick rifle grenade here, and rather than falling back, except Harry, who sadly got killed. Nothing further that, we got the ambulance there, we got an Emic Greyhound out here for Price, armored reconnaissance vehicle, which the Americans were quite fond of using. Gonna leave this there, forced away. Got the 2 2 1 sneak about here, ready to deal with the Americans again. Yeah. Man, he's only slightly grazed the grenadier before hitting that teller mine. Oh, poor Price. His mate certainly paid the ultimate price for Jesselin's sneaky trick there. Of course, he could just go for another mate, you know, quickly deal with things. Of course, he might be worried them up more teller mines about ready to turn another Greyhound into a. Well, dead hound. But rather unfortunate here for him that his investment really did not pay off in that regard. You know, he was not able to punish here, otherwise, Jesselin's infantry would play. I mean, had that not hit it, I mean, things could have looked a lot different here. So, of course, the question is will Jesselin. Oh, Price here try to invest again in the 10, you know, in the second go? Or will he basically just so go, well, that didn't work? And just move on. Nothing further there from Price, though he's being slightly pushed back here. Just advancing, perhaps a bit more confidently now, knowing that he just blew up a scout car like that, which is a bit of a slightly heavier investment in sort of the lighter vehicle scale, and could certainly further delay any heavier response there from Price. Though we do see a major on the way, but it might give Jesselin a bit more time to respond. He's going for a fifth grenadier. Yeah. Oh well, two to one here, rushing forwards, closing in on Vetri, two eight kills. In service of Safasa land with this little MG34 there on top. 
Continuing up here, Ravn holding up there. Not really weapons for them, he's got tons of munitions. Again, grenades up. Some BARs I think would do quite well there for Price. The grenade in particular could allow him if you know he caught up on the grenades to quickly pop a grenade. But of course also smoke grenades to deny him somewhat the use of his well their superior range, but also their light machine guns if they're carrying any. Rather a bit of trouble. Pioneers, grenadiers, and there you go, the two to one setting up on them. Same time assault going for the center. Now we got mines for up though. Could it maybe indicate he's going for something here? Or of course again with the major though, not likely. I mean, he could, of course, go for, say, a Scott rather rapidly to help deal with the infantry and vehicles, but from a safer distance that does not necessarily threaten it so deeply with the uh, Teller mines. Of course, he might just go for a Sherman. Of course, a few options there. Right from there, quickly force back. Kennedy's here versus the Lieutenant pulling up there. Thompson and BAR firing away. And we also then putting trying to kind of use it, taking some losses before being pushed away. And there we go, get you two for the two, two, one. Increasing its accuracy and its lethality. Mega with more light machine guns added into Jessen's forces. The danger becomes more impending here for Price's men, and certainly for any Panzer Gunner unit, be it from a Panzer division or just a full Panzer Gunner division, they would have it had a high quantity of light machine guns compared to regular infantry division. I mean, every infantry squad will have two MD-42s, MD-34s that way, presenting an awful lot of firepower. Little fun fact there in terms of organization. Most infantry divisions would not have had that even remotely. That was the 78th Sturm Grenadier Division, and otherwise maybe their Fusilier Battalion, which was usually sort of equipped a bit better and such, trained better. Might have had more light machine guns, but even that could sort of, you know, been rather variable. So, little fun facts in terms of light machine guns and their actual usage and sort of handing out. Two to one, heading up with the rifleman, rather than a bit of that position. Looks like they are going to try to get off an anti-tank rifleman right there. Almost got the two to one, but still forced away here. Too many grenadiers in the end. More right from moving up here, really. Some BARs I think would do good. In particular, all the rifleman rocking the task right now. BARs would certainly give it a bit more. Or grenades. And there we go though, intervention here from the Luftwaffe in support of the 15th, which had actually been moved in from Italy to support the Ardennes assault. No armor sign here, looks like he is going for a Sherman by the looks of things, though again Scott could have worked I think a bit faster here versus the Grenadiers under the right conditions. No tech come from Jesselin, don't you know if he does need to be sort of heavily redistributing resources either. Going pretty heavy on the gun, it is there, not what I prefer to see personally. I mean, heavy infantry spam is something, you know, that very quickly gets tiresome. In particular for the Germans, it does tend to sort of, I feel, not be the most effective and also a bit repetitive. So, I don't know, not something I usually feature a lot of. I prefer more of a combined arms play. But there goes Sherman on the way, therefore. Price and against some armor him versus. Jessen has not really got. He's got more packs on the way. Six gonna be is there. Two to one moving out. Lieutenant hanging about there. Tons of munitions though. Tons of munition. Nothing happening with it though. And there we go. Finally up, bring the two to one here to the two 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 with an auto cannon. They also exist in a variant where they actually upgraded with a slightly bigger, what they called a heavy anti-tank rifle, which is basically a very small anti-tank gun, which had a slightly, well, slower rate of fire, but on the hand for a bit more penetration, can also fire some fragmentation rounds. Little fun fact there. We've got rifle pushing up here versus the Grenadiers, slightly exposed here, not a good position there for Jessen's Grenadier. Got the Sherman rolling head here. Sherman there coming in front from the punts up the canon and we've got a command banker up here actually rather by the front here from Jesslin to help establish a forward position. 2-2-1 two, two, down. Needs to pop smoke here and there we go. Smoke fart then from the pack 40 allowing the safe escape here of the Sherman. Good job there. But well, this should definitely give 
does a bit more standing power, make him harder to push off the field, which is definitely going to help him. So that's actually nice to see. That's a bit rare to see, I think, overall. And so I think a lot of Vetermark players overall could benefit from building more Roth. So nice to see that from Jesse and there. Big thumbs up. Rather than up, they not really threatened by the Pioneers in their MP40s, not exactly being a long range weapon. Sherman there being repaired. He could then maybe add in the Scott to support later on. Have the Sherman sort of range about. Absorb shot size with the Scott, for example, deal with the packs from a safer distance. But also save with the Grenadiers. We got a no, S minefield going down there. Sort of block off areas here. In fact, using the wreckage of the scout car, I think, sort of helped funnel them into the mines. Not bad there. Clever, clever. Then he's been going to deal with the rifleman. Price has lost, I believe, one rifle squad there, so that's a bit harsh for him. Still no upgrades. I mean, he's got plenty of munitions. I mean, really, I think, translate into a lot of BARs right about now. Sort of really take the fight here versus Jeslin and also more equal things out there with increased firepower they in particular up close large push here rather bunched up though yes and though keeps pushing back here against price price beginning to struggle a bit more as the light machine guns really bring the weight here to the battle of course I mean another option besides Scott could also be getting more well trying again with some greyhounds again sort of trying to sneak up onto Newton and keep, get off a quick canister shot Never underestimate the cancer shot. Full retreat there, it seems. Ah, there we go. Upgrading for BARs finally. Finally, what goes going on here? Well, tech up from Jeslin. Support armor core there. You could, of course, also tick further up there going for a heavy panther core, but looks like Jeslin felt that was not. Necessary. But just in here pushing forwards with all of his grenadiers. But now Price here looking to equal things out a bit more with a bunch of Browning automatic rifles. We're losing a capture point. Button her up. Big push coming. Grenadiers holding up there, Sherman seeing about there killing off shots here and there, but not so far really collapsing. The forces of Jesslin and the 15th punch lady you saw. Basically taking heavy losses, half man. Or half a unit down there. Rest though, managed to escape almost right into one. There you go, a bit more of a great push here. Now, of course, if you had grenades, you could further sort of deny cover here to just there you go. The men forced up here as they're turning into the gun. These really a sort of hard push. Yeah. I mean, that's something you actually should be rather wary about, considering he's playing versus close air support, he knows it, I mean he knows it's going to be anti-infantry strafe, so I mean in that way just sort of really you know lumping the infantry together in one spot is rather going to encourage Jeslin to maybe consider having his friends from the Luftwaffe deal with a problem. There you go, falling back towards the command bunker. Now if he only had a bit more better cover. Rathman slightly falling back, and we have ooh, Pathfinders out here, the INR, Pathfinders, Intelligence and Reconnaissance. Let's see, taking some lighter damage before pulling back. Very large minefield here though, kind of this kind of taking up there. 50-50 so far in terms of map control. What you see here from the Sapoma Corps, Sturmgeschutz, Flak Panzer or Panzer, oh good lord. Got the lieutenant! Bastards, has it coming for being American? God damn Americans. Oh lord! Looks like he somehow managed to force the view crew there to retreat, leaving a Sherman there in completely perfect condition hanging about there. And in this case, rather than a quick sort of get into it before it suddenly becomes a panzer. Attempting to clean up the minefield. Surprise it ends up badly there with all the light machine guns bearing down on them. Looks like Price was a bit too preoccupied with other matters. Listen up. They are at 200 points. Now of course he lacks the munitions attack to pull an artillery barrage, but of course well timed he could for example clear maybe out the command bunker. And we got a Sturmgeschutz on the way, Sturmgeschutz there for Jesselin. Which was generally what armor support a Panzergunner division would organically have unless they were one of the few 
Brawl, the Rare and Elite Panzer Grenadier Divisions, in which case they could have actual Panzers attached to them. Otherwise, it was pretty much Sturmgeschutz all the way. Maybe some Yacht Panzers. Lieutenant Boy, and again, so it looks like he's really determined on that going here for the fuel point. Just trying his best here to deny Price vital fuel. Make good use of then the fact he's got a lot of infantry, of course, then sort of instead of just hoarding up like Price, that's just sort of pokes here and there. Very nice sort of counter response there, certainly make it harder for Price to act to hold territory. Pack forward here, they're getting swarmed here by riflemen. Swarmed and swarmed, but ganged up on at the very least. Could get that pack 40, that would definitely help out, I think. Right, but there you go, Sturmge shoots to the rescue, pinned by machine gun. Panzer is going off there, Sherman. Robin moving up, Sturmge shoots getting off. No hit so far, can't seem to hit a bloody thing. Smoke going down there, got a hit there finally on the. Sherman looks like it's forced to pull back, got Robin flanking up, they're gonna going to cover, they go. Pinned by machine gun up there to help deal with the team. I'm a Kearney, Shane Panzeri. Shooting away there at the rifleman, and bloody well misses. Good shooting, Heinz. There we go. And there you go, retreating right through the S-Mine field. Going to squad the wiped out, by the same turn, I believe he is getting two rifleman units there wiped out. Which I would say, rather makes it worth it. Stormgishut continues its hunt. It's a Yankee Panzer. Oh, takes a nasty hit there, though. Another hit there, Sherman misses, Duke pulls back though. Can't really make use of its range here without exposing itself to further American soldiers. It pulls back for repairs, they were still close to it as you want, and target weak point then being accessible. So Price is going to need to replace all those infantry losses. Of course, he could also now try going for an airdrop combat group. A bit risky, but would give him some heavy infantry and also give him access to an anti tank gun to help sort of resist the German armor here. The Sturmgeschutz. By the way, this is a clearly an earlier model, in particular due to the mandat here, which is more square. The later one was more rounded, and was colloquially known as the Sour Kopfel. I don't believe that was the official and technical designation of it. The later model also had a well coaxial machine gun, actually adding the number up to two, and some of them even had a remote control machine gun on the top, same as on the Hetzer. Fun facts there. As my field being cleared out, but so the rear is not trying to detain. Arm here by the storm gets shot. There we go. Quickly cutting down two men in a row. Return moving up. Oh, good lord, that stu is just on a well, spree here. We've got more men falling to the storm gets shot. And we got a Jackson here on the way for prize, adding in a heavy attack so to deal with things. Going to just need to move up. And there we go. Veteran G1. Target weak point. Opening up some heat rounds, which usually they would have maybe one or two rounds of. Actually, little fun fact there. Otherwise, the primary load basically was actually high explosive rounds. Uh, armor piercing rounds only accounted for about one third of the shells carried by any assault gun. Doesn't quite have the resource for another Stuke, though you should probably consider getting another one. Stukes generally work best in pairs, I feel. Looks like he's being a bit reckless listening in, and there you go, Jackson moving in. If he can sort of bait it in though and catch it with the target weak point, he might actually have a chance here with the higher rate of fire. There goes, shots went off. Target weak point, target's a weak point. Calling in an anti tank strafe. Ah, Stuke went out of control. But there we go, destroys the engine. Gains Fetchy 2 even as it blows up. We have lost a panzer. Posthumous promotion or prehumous promotion? I'm not entirely sure. Sherman so there getting Fetchy 2 increasing its rate of fire, but we've got Pack 40 there firing back at it. Well, that really did work out there for Price again. Actually, it's Samuel for the mid game analysis, but not really a good deal. A bit sort of ended up like his. M8 Greyhound, he's got to kill something, unlike the Greyhound though, but still a Stug for a Jackson, I'd say that's worth it for the German player, though of course he'd rather not want to waste it in pursuit since he just got virtually two. I do think with target weak point he could have coordinated it with the anti-tank strafe, knocked it out. But there you go. 
getting another stoop there, but overall the situation is right now, Price is very much on the backfield, he's lacking infantry, he needs to do something, but he also needs to do something a bit more specific versus the infantry, he's getting some kills here and there, but overall it's not really happening at a pace that's working out for him compared to the rate of attrition that's happening for Price, and that regard, all the right there were actually a bit expensive, that followed up with a, I think, rather late BAR adoption there amongst his troops, also hurt him a bit there, so he needs to do something here to turn things around, Greyhounds could be an option, Airdrop Combat Group, a bit expensive, but if he gets the right drop, it could actually do him quite a bit of good there, versus Jesselin. Otherwise, Greyhound's got something to sort of help deal with the infantry menace. I think that's his primary objective, basically bleeding up, because, I mean, it is a lot of grenadiers, and we can't hit it correctly. He can really cripple Jesselin very rapidly, and in that regard, Scots and Greyhounds, I think, will be the better choice. As for Jesselin, fuel cash is made in more strong shots, which he's getting is good. Pardon me, we'll say, you know, maybe get some Panzer going sort of mix in between the Grenadiere. Or maybe consider taking up at a later point, but otherwise not really much there to comment on. Basically, he's just keeping up well, using infantry in a rather interesting tactical manner, not just relying on, well, brute force. So that is nice to see. So, let's return here to the fight. Sherman, Sherman falling go. back. Lieutenant Rear Slums moving ahead. Got pack forward here with the veterans you want as well. Heat launch for that as well. Fun fact anti tank gun crews, I believe, also carried some a few high explosive rounds with them actually for dealing with more direct targets that need to be dealt with there. You tend to end a fire from the gun leads by the light machine gun. Not really getting much done here with the INR Pathfinders, not entirely sure what Price is thinking. Maybe he's waiting for a good opportunity to call in artillery barrage and basically remove a vital asset there from Jesselin. Quick rough grenade there. And I still think Price would benefit, I think, from grenades there. Got another Sherman on the way there for Price though. 15 kills on this one though, we've got going to bring it to the centre. Take him on loss, pack 40 there firing away. Got a decent hit there, off. On the Sherman. Listen up. Point captured. Okay, we have crew ready. Stand by. Sneaking up here with the pack 40 as well. INR Pathfinders falling back here, basically serving as reconnaissance and spotters for Price at the moment. Storm Gishut seen rolling back there in the distance. There we go, pack 40 firing again. Rifleman. Lieutenant moving up here. Sherman taking lots of hits there. Might get knocked out here. Stugman not to get the killing hit there. Falling back, actually. Rifleman moving up here against the pack 40. Stugman which is... Oh, got the damage engine there. Bad news. Bad news. Sherman there receiving lots of repairs. So the Sherman moving up here. And we got the Luftwaffe striking in again. I think he's trying to deal with the Sherman there, maybe. No, trying to catch the position here. Almost got the ambulance. Almost got the ambulance. Although I'm pretty sure the ambulance crew isn't too happy about it, nonetheless, since the ambulance is almost cooked. Rather now, Jesselin's got a nice stranglehold on Price, and Price is a bit sort of struggling to get out of it. Sherman moving ahead there, getting on some hits there on the Grenadier. And basically standing out there, no one's sort of noticing them. They're pretty good at hiding behind a small piece of rock. But there you go, finally spotted. Finally forced off. And there you go, both Sherman moving ahead here, catching the Grenadiers, almost wiping them. Almost. Down to one man. Hundita. Good lord, he made it. And there you go, Sherman caught here by two pack 40s, vetching two on that one. Storm gets bring ahead as well. Almost got the Sherman, almost. Can he get it? Can he get it? Ah, missed. Infinite assault going forward here. Under Price's command. Stu firing away. Get some poor soul. I believe that was the Pathfinder there that got hit by a high explosive shell. They're 40, they're being rolled, we got a really lot of rifle there, Lieutenant Forms apart, marching forward. Grenades hitting what the camera like machine guns, he might put him at risk there for a lot. Well, rifle grenade, or a strafe again. 
Bit of a bad habit there for Prize at the moment. Seems relying a bit too much on brute force. Which Jason is more than the kill strike. Now we got a tiller strike going down here. I do believe he might have gotten a pack 40 there. Completely wrecking one of Jesselin's anti-tank guns by the looks of it. Maybe not. Stug there pulled back with heavy damage inflicted. Champs also on the back foot for the time being. Looks like he's now setting up for the airdrop. Come on, we floating a lot of manpower here, Mr. Price. Either that or he's thinking of trying to get all the Greyhounds rapidly and that way sort of swarm his opponent with them. Well, preoccupied with the no engagement. Got a BAR handed over there for Zemli Kaunen. Command Banker still serving an excellent put. put well, drop there for Jesselin. Doing quite a bit of good there for him. Switching on the Stuke to only deal with armor, limiting a bit of its potential. I feel he could get some more. Pendulum out machine guns, he's now floating, f well, trading resources for well, fuel for munitions. Sitting up ready for some airstrikes there, feeling rather confident having two Stooks, two pack 40s, and all those kind of deers. Troops are there hanging about a bit. We got, there we go, the airdrop combat group from Price. Been a bit of a while since seems that one. Again, he's a bit sort of expensive to stay up for, but usually you can get something good out of it, I feel, and usually two paratrooper squads with either maybe some. Thompson, so grinding up machine guns with a pair of bazookas can do quite well. So there we go, one unit with Thompson sub machine guns, the other one with a pair of bazookas. Of course, one thing to note about these pair troops is if they do turn around with sub machine guns, they do not get the ability for them. That is the tactical advantage compared to the. Whoa! Stugo drop going down. Wiping the anti tank gun! Ha! Huh. Clever there by Jason, the pan suspecting that was going in. He actually sort of found out where it was. Basically did his best to nice opponent there, the anti-tank gun. Cheeky Jeslin. But there you go, a pair of troops hunting down the gun. The gun is having a hard time getting away there for some sub machine guns and the M1 carbines. Really getting some good damage there. There you go, half the gun of the unit already down here. The pair of troops definitely proving their worth quite easily. No further strike going in. Starving up the rapid advance of the paratroopers. Sherman needs to get away there before the Stu pack 40 combo hit. Target weak point, target to weak point. There we go, heat round lights up the Sherman like a ransom lighter. Almost fetching two there. Paratroops hit caught in all the pit of They might get the Stuke here though, expressing its rear. Bazooka's firing in. Almost got it, almost got it. The new thing that they can to support. And again, one of these I do feel to some extent the Stuke doesn't really have could do more armor. I mean, he basically has no resistance versus a Bazooka. And in the actual war, it did have. There you go. Another stroke down the way though for Jesslin. Quick to replace, quick to replace. But now Jesslin, or Price, I mean, does possess a bit more firepower here versus the German infantry. Of course, he just needs to get a bit closer. Of course, in that regard, it might have been better for him more if he'd gotten the Browning Light machine gun on the drop. But there you go. Can't have everything. We're at 200 points. Things are not exactly good. Victory points are low. They're still higher though than Jesslin's at the moment. He's got no territory, and Jesslin's basically setting up, preparing for another army assault. It looks like we got Price again ready instead of just trying to sort of attack in. We're previously sort of trying for another approach, which is good. Second storm we should arriving again for Jesslin. Guys falling back here from the building, have a spotting and reported what's coming their way. We got here Jesson reacting nicely to it. Stuke sitting up here. I think he's moving a bit too far ahead though. He should have think he should have kept a bit more distance sort of to use the strength better here. That pulling in range of the Zooks and the lights. Damage ending there, that's unfortunate. Pulling it away here. Paratroops moving in here. Gun is a bit trouble. We got a pine up grenade going through there. Got that squad covering. Almost got them inside. Then we got veteran 20 for the paratroopers. Gun is pushed away. Strafing run going in in this case again. Bit too close with the infantry. A bit too close. Luftwaffe wants to put a stop there. Sherman coming up for the storm. Get shots. Other oh, the falling back there, almost ready to shot, failed to penetrate. More shots going through there, Bazookas and Sherman shells there, making short back there of the end game wise. The arm of the storm There you go, main gun destroyed. Other Stuke needs to turn around there, shots it. Then he's here, finding him from the command bunker. Needs more troops in there, but the most of them are gone. We got an anti tank gun straight for it. Storm shoots knocked out. Stug almost, Vection T2. 
more shots going through there. Veteran D2 increasing the armor of the stronger shots. There we go, got a paratrooper. Stuka bomb drop. To cover here, actually got some more from his own fuel. Basically, he was trying to buy more time, I think, from the stronger shots. Got another paratrooper there. Shot failed to penetrate. Stuka has slightly better armor, but it's not actually even better than a Panzer 4 unit Venture 2. And there you go, rapidly knocked out. Rendering the veteran Stuka not. Pioneers are getting click wiped out. Blob assault here. Destin doesn't quite have another anti tank strafe or anti infantry strafe here. And that guy here would be great if Destin maybe had gone so heavily than it is. Black 10 mixed in some heavy machine guns in here, and then that would really have punished Price right here. So I imagine there we go. Another little further strafing again. We're going to see Price hit punish that for basically blobbing up. And there you go. Stopped. Bunker did get knocked out. And there you go. Price is forced. Pushed away. Chum there being repaired. Training resources again. Looks like there are no more Storm Grishards here to support Jessland's defensive versus the Americans. Still, he's got most of the map. He's definitely got the victory point need here versus Price now. Gonna do this holding out here. Looks like he's trying to get closer to pull off something nasty here versus all of Price's troops. I think he might have actually been aiming to a spot up and maybe call in a well Stuka bombing strike here to wipe out the retreating troops. Rather bolted there, but Jeslin with this case did not quite work out for him. Though I'm sure Price is rather relieved about that one. Sherman getting more kills, please be careful he doesn't get uh, maneuvered and panther faster than caught up here by pack four. And there you go. Tag weak point could definitely also help here. There we go. Sherman stunned, damaged, engine. Tiller strike going down there. Oh, knocking out a pack 40. Again. Almost got the Sherman, almost got it. Trying to repair here. Counter attack from Price. Petra was there close to Veteran T2. Sherman looks like it will escape here. The Wrath of Jesslin and the Third Reich. Gunner is here being pushed away though. Straight past the paratroopers. And the lieutenant, who's Veteran D3 and thus quite lethal. <coughs> Price won't take back as much territory. Victory Report's not quite looking to his favour. Jesslin just getting more gunner at this point. Getting a flak pants now on the hand, that's a more well, sensible choice, but not sure against all these grenadiers. The Quick price will be saving up for another airdrop combat group without into any more paratroops there versus opponent, which only helped, of course, maybe a chance of an anti tank gun that doesn't get wiped out at first opportunity by <laughs> Jesselin. Cutting off through again, though, advancing. A broad advance now for price, less blobbing up here. Reinforcing, healing up, preparing for the next fight. Jesslin bunching up his troops a bit. Bet you two there go, and that means halting increased grenade range sand. He doesn't quite have the munitions to actually pop off a grenade, and there you go, falls away here. By the lump there of grenadiers from Jesslin. We turn moving up again, right into all the black machine guns. Still no grenades, for some couldn't deal with them. We have some BRs still on the right front, but still overpowered here in this case. Overpowered. By the Grenadiers, we've got the Zulka Petro Troopers here, but they're not really going to help match versus the Grenadiers here. Two of them, Veteran 3, they have a machine guns. Not good for the pair troops, and they are ultimately pushed away off the field. Sherman moving out again. Now we got the Flak Panzer here, ready to help. A versus C. Feigned. Rifle trains here too, and there we go. Flat pants arriving, quickly turning the tide here. Leaving most of the rifle rather dead. In fact, dropping a BAR there. For their much usage. Hmm. Looks like he's getting something, though, sick, getting a pack 40. Another Sherman on the way there for. Price. Grenadiers ready. Firing on us. 
redistribute resources going on. And then it is close to being wiped out, but not quite. We get with the Pathfinders. Price that is rapidly losing control of the map again. So he's building up some more compressor on the force again. He's trying to sort of push Jesslin off. Question of course, will it actually work? There goes Sharon flying back. Almost 52. Less than 100 points there for Price. The clock is ticking and it's not ticking in his favour. Black Panther being hit again is taking damage but not actually any loss there. We've got Lieutenant moving in north here. Peck Ford is firing away there. Sherman victory too but might get knocked there with the target weak point if he's not careful. Sherman almost knocked out. Keeps in the fight though. Panther fast off there. Nope. Oh, cancelled. Cancelled. Another little five stuff here. Catching again. A bit of a hot tendency there from Price. Quickly starting the entire unit. Getting an excellent opportunity here for Gessling to move in and wipe out anyone. He could actually, I think, crush them all or just bring the flat lines in between them. It looks like in this case he did not take the chance here. Craft grenade off. In this case, Price finally does retreat. Then he's here versus Lieutenant. Lieutenant almost wiped out. Again. Forced away there. Attacking ground here, I think. A bit silly. Third chairman on the way with Will it be enough here for Price? The victory points are definitely not in his favour now. Soon less than 50. Pioneers in the way here for Jesslin. Not a lot of troops left. Getting another Sherman there. Three Shermans. Might work, but will it be fast enough to work? That's really the big question here for Price at the moment. Because he does not have a lot of time. In fact, it's quite the opposite. He's barely got any time. Third Sherman. Twenty-three. Twenty points. Seventeen. Sherman's running into the centre here. Looks like now Price has given up most thoughts here. Got a single Sherman up to the west here. But already one Sherman close to destruction. Five points left. Two. And... Game over. A loss here to Price, despite some interesting efforts. In the end, though, he felt, I think, a bit too much there on blobbing and just raw force, which, thanks well to the doctrinal choice system, made he could easily deal with just with a single strafing run. Had he gone for md 4 I think he would also more easily dealt with it. A roll for Price, I mean, he really had, I think, a good opportunity to really do a lot of damage. Basically, in part, you know, he got caught here by a mine, and not really the most unusual mine spots, I'd say, but overall, I think he should have tried for more Greyhounds earlier on and sort of tried to sort of cause a lot of infantry damage to Jessalyn in that way. I think had he done that, he probably would have stood a much better choice. That or some earlier BARs. I mean, he really went quite a bit of time before he even considered browning automatics. And that also, I think, further gave Jessalyn's infantry spam himself a bit of an advantage. So while the early game was, I think, in some regards, a bit bland, the later game certainly had a bit more action with it. Sturm, Gishut, Sherman's airstrikes and the... All the other bits there, even an airdrop comic group follow up with a quick Stuka drop there to sort of try and catch it off guard as well. Overall, nice use of Jesslin there. He did not really resource and sort of blopping as heavily as prices. There might have been an occasional usage of it, but overall, it was more sort of tactical and flexible maneuvering of this kind of is, which overall also gave Jesslin a longer term more of an advantage. Because again, Price really didn't do anything with his rifle, nor did he actually say consider getting Greyhounds again, even later on, sort of quickly mowed down any gun that are sort of off on their own. Scott, I think, could also have been a good job there, so I think, you know, Price rather missed some good opportunities than then overall allowed Jesslin to sort of, well, overall slowly grind him down. In part also thanks to that command bunker. So there you go. I hope you enjoyed this match. I hope you learned something from it. I hope it gave you some ideas. If it did, why not subscribe, tell your friends, share it with everyone. This is Imperial Dane saying thank you all for watching and see you tomorrow. Bye.